Okay, getting back to work. So I'm a little embarrassed to say that um, I never actually thoroughly inspected the garboard plug area. Um, and what I found was that when I took a pair of channel lock pliers and twisted on this just lightly, the thing came right off. Uh, and the reason for that was that it was being held with this um, soft caulking. And there were three screws in here. Uh, two of them were broken off and one was in a hole that was too big. So it wasn't real, they weren't really doing anything. And I'm not sure, you know, what happened in, in its former life that it came to this state, but um, it's here now. So um, the, the problem with that is had I, had I struck an underwater object even lightly, it would have knocked that thing right off and um, pretty much sank the boat very quickly, uh, you know, due to the size of that hull. Unless, of course, I had jumped over the side, if I found it, and stuck a wooden plug in there, um, you know, which is possible, but who knows. So um, <clears throat> the issue here with this particular one is, number one, it's, it's it, the plug part sticks out quite a bit. I'd say that's at least three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch, you know, and that's, that's screwed all the way in. Um, the other part is that the flange part seems a little bit yellow, and I'm not exactly sure if that's bronze. So I'm going to err on the side of caution. Um, I do have another flange that I know to be bronze. This is actually new. Uh, it's made by Sea Dog, and what I did was uh, I was able to get a hold of a flush plug. This is the type that you just stick a 3 8 ratchet into to uh, unscrew and screw in. Um, I had a heck of a time looking or finding that. I, I, found, I ended up finding it on uh, hoseandfittings.com. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I, was, I was thinking about glassing that over, uh, which would be... You know, it is kind of close to the edge, so the taper wouldn't be correct. But um, there's some value in having this uh, garboard plug. A lot of value, actually. Uh, I have to uh, plan for all contingencies. If I if I do sail to northern latitudes uh, and I haul out and I'm away from the from the boat for any period of time, I you know water can get into the bilge and then freeze. Uh, and if that's plugged up, then that would be a big problem because it could crack the hull. So um, that's my justification for keeping this on. So the plan is to through bolt that right in through the hull. Um, and I also want to add a backing block uh, for maximum safety. Uh, this is a piece of G10 board that I shaved down. It's probably a little less than a quarter inch thick, and I, I needed to really be careful about adding this because there is uh, two bilge pumps in there, uh, one of which is literally right there, so it, it, the space is an issue. Uh, also, because it's cold out, I'm going to uh, heat up the area to epoxy the backing block in. Um, with I'll be using just uh, regular West Systems epoxy with uh, chopped fiberglass, also known as kitty hair. Also, uh, I think I'm going to just recess the hull here uh, where I drew that line. That way the whole thing is nice and flush. Okay, so I was able to get that backing block um, epoxied to the back, which you really can't see from here. Uh, but what I did was I just uh, drilled a hole here and drilled a hole in the backing block and then just used a drill bit to support it while I was getting the epoxy set up. Also, I've added epoxy here to the outer edge because it was um, the hole was too big. Um, also, I couldn't even get this thing to drill in, uh, uh, you know, uh, to attach with a screw because it was so close to the edge. So now I'm going to grind it back. Now I've cleaned up the hole with a rasp and dry fitted this with just some self-tapping screws for now. I've managed to recess the hull a tiny bit 
Um, I don't really want to go much further than that. Uh, it's not just the hull thickness. There's a uh, looks like some broken off screws here from long ago that someone had put in and probably probably tried uh, to uh, twist them too hard. So the the flange has a little bit of a ridge right here, and I did a little slot for that to accommodate it. Also, I, I did sand back the um, the bottom paint a little better, exposing the barrier coat. I put on some barrier coat, which is a West Systems epoxy with 422 additive, and lightly sanded. Now for some real fun. So I was able to get the backing block plate off uh, after it had been epoxied. I just stuck a screwdriver in the seam and uh, give it a light tap with a hammer and it popped off. And I intentionally did not epoxy this on, um, you know, really well because I wanted to get it off for uh, the modification that I'm going to do, uh, as well as uh, now that the holes are drilled in the right position, I'm, I'm going to embed the the nuts in there so that um, uh, when I threw bolt it, it'll go go in pretty easily. So now now I'm going to do that um, modification that I believe is somewhat unique. I've got the holes recessed with the Dremel. Now epoxied in. Okay, so now that that epoxy is set up, uh, I'm doing a bit of a modification. Um, I put a layer of fiberglass on this side. This is the side that's going to attach to the hull, to the inside of the hull. It needs to be trimmed, of course. Uh, and then I filled the inside of the, the hole for the backing block with uh, thickened epoxy. So the idea with this modification is I'm going to drill a small hole in here, maybe about one eighth uh, of an inch. That way, if I ever lost the garboard plug, um, only a small amount of water will be getting in through the 1 8 inch hole. And the, the idea is that the bilge pumps should be able to keep up with that. And I finished it up uh, by trimming off that excess fiberglass and painting with bilge paint. Uh, this looks very rough in texture because some of the nuts had popped out, even though they were epoxied in. So what I did was I used an old trick. I used uh, super glue with some baking soda, and that forms an instantaneous uh, bond. Um, and I don't even need it to be really strong. I just needed to hold it in place uh, when I'm sticking the screws in. So this is ready to be epoxied back on to the inside of the hull. Okay, so now inside the cabin, um, I found the best way to get stuff down into the deep part of the bilge. And this is the aft part of the keel where it's hollow. Uh, all of the ballast is uh, a bit more forward. Uh, I use one of these long grabber thingies because it's almost like four feet down there. Um, can't really go through here because the hoses are in the way. But if I go right below the engine... I can get it in there. Okay, so now I've finally gotten the backing block epoxy to the inside of the hull. And it was a little bit challenging trying to get it positioned so that I can get the bronze screws into the nuts that are embedded in the back. But with this little hole that I drilled, I was able to push a little wood screw in there and um, Kind of like this and then just uh, I was able to kind of position it so that I could get get them in and then put some epoxy on the inside and that finishes it off so I've used 5200 to seal it up um, and of course uh, three bronze bolts so to recap, I've put a backing block on the inside, uh, which in essence makes the hull more than an inch thick. Um, through bolted it rather than using self-tapping screws. And then uh, drilled a hole in there. Uh, the hole's about an eighth of an inch thick. That'll allow the bilge pumps to keep up with um, any sort of leak or even if I 
if I lost the plug. Um, and and this plug will uh, go in there. It'll it fits nice and flush. Doesn't protrude. Um, so there is a, a chance that you know, I may uh, change my mind in this uh, on this as a, as I often do. Um, I could always just glass it over, and then if I feel the need uh, to install this in, in a colder climate or just as needed, I, I could easily install it. Uh, but for now, this is what I have and this is what I'm sticking with.